Hello everyone, myself Kushali Patel. Today we are going to discuss about the impacts of COVID-19 on contract laws. As we all know, the most prominent base of the business world is contract. A contract is a legally binding agreement which creates mutual obligations in between the parties. This means that each of the parties are required to fulfill their obligations through performance. If any of the parties to the contract fails to perform as per the condition stated in the agreement, this causes breach of contract and the defaulted party is required to compensate for their non-performance. Contracts are a very crucial part in the trade and commerce, national as well as cross-border trades. The law relating to contracts in India is being prescribed by the Indian Contract Act 1872. COVID-19 Pandemic In the month of December 2020, the unexpected arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic, which originated in Wuhan, China, had disrupted various aspects of our life, which includes uncertainty, financial pressures, and social isolation. Lockdown was imposed by almost countries worldwide for an uncertain period. And due to this lockdown, restrictions were imposed on the transportation of goods and on the movement of vehicles, except just for the emergency purposes. Because of this, businesses were prevented to work efficiently and they were highly impacted to fulfill their contractual obligations. Many contracts were delayed, hold up, or even terminated due to the disruptions of supply chains caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, in this video, we will talk about how this pandemic affects contract laws, like when things are out of control, when it becomes impossible to fulfill a contract, or when the situation changes so much that the continuation of the contract becomes unfair. Due to the pandemic, governments around the world implemented different measures to deal with the economic effects. They introduced various incentive packages, temporary changes into regulations, and offered financial aid to struggling industries. These actions could have affected contractual relationships by altering the legal landscape and giving opportunities for help. Now, in the light of COVID-19, Indian government also took some measures on February 19, 2020. By issuing an office memorandum, the Ministry of Finance came up with the force majeure clause, which states that coronavirus should be considered as a case of natural calamity and force majeure may be invoked wherever considered appropriate. Now, let us understand the concept of force majeure. Many a times, contracts include act of God clause. Now, this can also be known as force majeure clause. Black's Law Dictionary states that it is an event which cannot be controlled or no one had anticipated it earlier. This clause provides protection against the risk of loss if performance of contractual obligation turn out to be impossible for the parties. In our Indian statutes, the concept of force majeure is not provided, but its reference can be seen in section 32 of the Contract Act, which states that contingent contract becomes void when happening of an event becomes impossible. Let me tell you, Force majeure is a temporary relaxation given to the parties to the contract as the clause does not excuse a party's non-performance entirely, but it only suspends it for the duration of an event. To understand further, let me explain you with two different situations where the contract may include force majeure clause or it may not. If the contract includes the list of events like uh, acts of God, war, terrorism, epidemics, pandemics, 
any natural calamity or acts of government or it can also contain clause such as uh, any acts or events which are beyond the control of parties uh, the such clauses can be applied to the force majeure clause to be kept in mind parties to the contract cannot claim force majeure ex post fact it becomes obligatory for the parties in contract to serve the notice if the performance in whole or in part is prevented or uh, delayed due to the force majeure event you know so that either of the parties may at its interest terminate or uh, postpone the obligations of contract for some time when the contract does not include force majeure clause the parties are required to ascertain various factors like uh, the nature of the contract whether it can be performed uh, wholly or partly or it may be the nature of an event now from here it emerges the principle of the doctrine of frustration let us understand the concept of doctrine of frustration section 56 of the indian contract act states that any event like any event out of the fundamental objective of the contract comes into existence due to which it becomes impossible for the party to perform such contracts are considered as frustrated contracts hence any act impossible it itself will be considered as void the principle of doctrine of frustration uh, was upheld in the case of satyabrata ghosh versus mugniram bangor in this case uh, the court held that the term impossibility stated in section 56 shall be interpreted in a practical manner as like when the parties were entering into the contract they were not aware about the impossibilities of the act that may happen in the future now due to this circumstances the base of the contract is changed and results into non performance because of this such contracts are ceased to operate and parties are discharged from their contractual obligations now let me explain you what is the difference between both the concepts force majeure and doctrine of frustration so uh, the doctrine of frustration says if you sign a contract and later something happens that makes it impossible for you to do what you agreed to do and you didn't think about this thing when you signed the contract uh, you might not have to do what you have promised in force majeure situation before signing a contract both the parties usually agree on a list of specific events that would trigger the force majeure clause if they happens in the future frustration of a contract comes into play when the very reason or purpose behind the contract is completely destroyed this doctrine makes the contract invalid meaning all the obligations of the parties are no longer valid frustration of a contract is a way to test the contract's provision and happens when events occur after the contract was signed a force majeure is a part of a contract that deals with unexpected events it allows for delays in fulfilling the contract if such event happens it doesn't usually mean that parties are completely uh excused for the non performance of their contractual responsibilities um usually if there's a situation that's uh, not mentioned in a contract but it's like a force majeure event the affected party might claim a frustration of the contract but if the opposite is true and the specific event is already listed as a force majeure event in the contract then you cannot automatically claim a uh, frustration of the contract for that event coming to the uh, conclusion of this uh, video i must say that uh, during the covid-19 pandemic businesses faced tough times worldwide with supply chains economies and uh, contracts all messed up 
to deal with this they used legal stuff like uh, force majeure and frustration of contracts to cut their losses and stay safe they had to stick close to their legal advisors follow their contract rules and uh, make smart moves to handle the changing laws as things settled into a new normal businesses learn a lot that will help them handle contracts and risk better in the future now right now businesses are still dealing with the fallout from the pandemic but many have changed how they do things to handle ongoing problems better like supply chains are becoming stronger economic uh, economies are also getting back on track and contracts are getting looked at again like based on what we have learned from the pandemic even though things are still changing businesses are more ready to deal with contract issues and the risk than they were at the start of the pandemic with this i would like to conclude thank you for watching the video